Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to implement a while loop in N8N. A while loop is a very fundamental concept in programming, but it's not the easiest thing to do in N8N, especially if you're a beginner. To illustrate this, I'm going to be going over a web scraping example. We're going to be scraping some Google Maps restaurant data, and we're going to be using a platform called Appify. I'm going to be leaving a link to a GitHub repo in the description of this video, where I'm actually going to be including the entire workflow that we're going to build today, so you guys can take it and play with it to your heart's desire. Welcome back to Tommy Codes. Let's get right into it. So we're in Google Maps here, and let's say you're in New York City, you're staying in Manhattan, and you want to find a breakfast sandwich and you don't know anyone who can give you a rec. So you just go straight to Google Maps and you type in breakfast sandwich. You click around here. This is very straightforward. I'm sure we've all done this. But now let's say you actually want to get this data into a spreadsheet. You have this spreadsheet here, Manhattan breakfast sandwiches, and you're going to rate all of them or something like that. Well, you want to get all this data into the spreadsheet and you don't want to do it manually. Of course, you could sit down and manually go in and enter Vanilla Gorilla Cafe into here, put in its address, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't have time for that. It's 2025. We should be automating all of this stuff. And if you want to automate this, you either have to use the Google Maps API, which is going to be expensive and a pain in the ass, or you have to do some web scraping, which is going to be a lot more of a pain in the ass, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Luckily, there's this platform called Appify that makes web scraping really easy, and it plugs in directly into N8N. So we can automate all of this and get the spreadsheet populated. So we're in Appify here, and what we have here is the Google Maps Scraper. The Google Maps Scraper, as you can see here, takes in a search term, in this case, breakfast sandwich. It also takes in a location and some other parameters and filters and whatnot. I have Manhattan, New York, and then breakfast sandwich. Let's go ahead and run this guy. We're going to click start. And now we're taking this page where we have this table output. And as we can see here, we see that the actor is getting your data. So it's actually running right now, going against live Google Maps and pulling in the data for us. This is going to take a minute, depending on the number of results, how fast the actor is, et cetera, et cetera. But this could take anywhere from 10 to 40 seconds. And this is for only 50 results. If this was going to be hundreds of thousands of results, this could take hours. And we can see here that stuff is streaming in. We've got the name, we've got addresses, the score, the number of reviews. So we can do a lot with this data and we can clearly get this into Google Sheets easily. But what if we want to do this with N8N? Well, luckily, Appify has an API. And if we go over to Actors, let's go back to Google Maps Scraper. We're going to click on this API up here. We're going to see a bunch of API endpoints. And one of the endpoints that we're going to want to use is called Run Actor. Run Actor will trigger the actor. And in the body of this request, you pass in the parameters like the queries to Google Maps and the location, which I'll explain in a minute. But if you'll notice, there's a few different run actor options. There's run actor, there's run actor synchronously, there's run actor synchronously and get data set items. So if you run run actor, it's going to return immediately. You're basically just going to get a thumbs up from Appify that says, yep, we got your request and it's running in the background. If you do run actor synchronously, it is going to wait until the actor is fully complete, but it's not going to return any data. If you run run actor synchronously and get data set items, it is going to run the actor. You're going to be blocked waiting for it to finish. And in the response body, you will get all of the data set items. Now, this is probably the easiest one to use by far because you're just going to get the data. It's almost just like calling a regular API. But the downside here is some of these actors can take, you know, 20 minutes, 40 minutes to run. And you might run into some issues with timeouts. You, you don't want to have something that finicky. What if it breaks? So what we're going to do is we are first in N8N. We are going to run the actor with this endpoint. Then we are going to go in. And we are going to pull the status of the run. And that's going to tell us if it's done or not. And then once the run is done, then we can go in and actually get the data set items. And I'll show you guys how this works. But basically what we need to do is keep calling this get run endpoint until the status that it returns is succeeded or success or something like that. So let's go over to N8N. I've got that New York City breakfast sandwich scraper here. And the first thing we're going to do is use an HTTP request. And unfortunately, as of May 2025, when I'm recording this video, there is no native Appify integration. So we are just going to go with the straight HTTP request. And we're going to do is we're going to go over into Google Maps scraper. We're going to go into the API. We are going to run the actor. Whoops. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. We're going to run the actor. We're going to copy that. We're going to paste that in here. We're going to use a post and we need to send a body because we need to give it the parameters and the parameters. I mean, all of this stuff here. So if we go down here, we can change this to JSON and then we can copy this and then we can go over into any of and just paste that directly into the body. And then once we run this, you'll notice that we get a response immediately from Appify. That's on the right hand side. And we get stuff like the act ID and the ID, which I believe is the run ID. But nowhere in here do we actually get the results. And that's because they're not actually available yet. So while we're, while we're testing this, I'm going to go ahead and click pin on this node because I don't want to have to keep re-triggering this scrape every time. And now what we're going to do is actually pull the status. So we are going to do another HTTP request. Okay, so here's the run that we just triggered from N8N. And as we can see here, let's go to the API. 
the run ID is this FUX, FUX. And then if we go over here, the ID returned to us in the initial call to run actor is this FUX here. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. We are gonna paste it into the URL here. And if we call test, and if we call test step here, we'll see that there's this status here that says succeeded. So succeeded means that it's actually done. And we'll notice that it started at and finished at, and that should actually line up exactly with the started at and finished at here. So we look here, started at 1620. If we go over here, it started at, yeah, 2120. So that's UTC. But anyway, we don't wanna hard code this ID. We wanna make sure that we're using the ID from the output. So we're gonna do data dot ID. And now if we test this again, this indeed works. Cool, and then assuming that the response, the status is actually succeeded. So now we have this if here. So we're gonna say if the status is equal to, and we'll copy this, if it's equal to succeeded, then what we're going to do is actually get the data set items. So now we can go in and grab this other API. So that would be API, and we're going to get the data set items. We're gonna copy that. We are gonna paste this here. And again, we have to use the HTTP request. So let's go HTTP request and we're gonna call that. This will work, and again, here's the 50 items. They're nice in a table right here, but we need to be, we need to be careful that we're actually not hard coding this data set ID. So let's go ahead and go to expression, and what we want here is actually the data set ID, which should be somewhere over on the left-hand side here. Hmm, it is, I think it's called default data set ID. Yes, here it is. So we put that in there, and now we see this guy. We hit test step, and it works. So that's good. So that's all well and good. And then assuming that works, let's actually go into Google Sheets and I am going to append or update row in a sheet. And we are gonna pick the, we're gonna configure the sheets here and we are gonna map automatically. Let's test that step. And there we go. So the data was actually populated. Luckily it did everything with the columns. That all looks good. Very, very nice. So we have our 50 results, but I kind of cheated here because we, we already knew that the results were done and we, we have this if statement here, but what happens if it was false? What happens if it was false? Well, if it's false, what we wanna do is actually sleep. So that's gonna be a wait because we don't know when it's gonna be done. We kinda of just have to sit there. So we'll wait for five seconds. And then after we wait for five seconds, we actually wanna feed it back into the original HTTP request. So this is how the while loop works in any end. If you click plus over here, so if we add a new node, there is no while. And if we look at loop, there is a for loop, basically iterate over a set of items, but there is no while loop. So that's what we have to do here. We, we iterate back and I wanna show you guys what this looks like. So what we're gonna do is actually unpin this, unpin, and let's go back, let's go in here. We're gonna open this up and we're gonna change the max crawl places for search to, we'll do 150. So that's a little more, hopefully this takes a little longer. And we're gonna go back to the canvas and now this is unpinned. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the workflow. So let's hit test, let's hope this works. Boom, so as we can see, now we are in the false branch. And let's actually look at the output of the status. We'll see that it says running, and it's still running. The crawler has been started. And basically, if we go over into Appify, we're gonna notice in the runs tab that this guy's still running. So this is what I mean by we have to pull and wait for the results. And we don't know how many times this loop is gonna go through. It's not like we know ahead of time, oh, we just have to go through five iterations of this waiting loop, and it looks like we actually on this time did exactly five. We have no way to know. It could take 50, it could take 5,000, but, but that's why we need the while loop. We need to do something until a condition is met. So if we look over here, this guy ran five times, this guy ran five times, the wait ran four times, and then eventually, finally, we were able to make the final HTTP request to fetch the data set items and then add that to the Google Sheet. And if I go over to my Google Sheet, now we have uh, what looks like 200 great breakfast places in Manhattan. So you can do whatever you want with that. Cool. So now we've renamed this. It's a little easier to work with. And what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to take this. I'm going to download this workflow as a JSON. I'm going to put it in a Git repo and I'm going to leave it on GitHub publicly available so you guys can basically have this and use it in whatever you want. And I wanted to explain this to you guys using this example of Appify because I think that's a pretty common use case for N8N. And it's the one place where I've really wanted to have a while loop. And it took me a little longer than I'd like to admit how to actually do this in N8N. Even though I learned a while loop like my first day of programming way, way back. So if you guys are interested in hearing why I actually changed my mind on these no-code platforms like N8N in the first place, you should check out this video right up here.